The first one is on poverty. Eastern Baluchistan is one of the poorest realities in the world, according to estimates made by international institutions and available in the Pakistani press. Education, literacy, health, water and sanitation levels are among the worst in the whole world. The second one is on education. Uh, still quoting from um, the report that I mentioned to you um, a short while ago, that is the, the report on the situation on Balochistan by the uh, Commission on Human Rights, uh, representatives of the minority communities um, highlighted discrimination in schools in the form of content of textbooks and compulsory subjects. All children belonging to minority groups had to study Islamic studies and the textbooks contained material that did not paint religious minorities in a positive light and was considered derogatory. The representatives of minority groups stressed the need for provision of alternatives for their communities so that it led to a more inclusive society. The third point is on security. Crime and terrorism are widespread in Balochistan. Targeting minorities and civil society leaders, the authorities suspect of nationalist tendencies. Let me quote here an extensive extract of the report released on Sunday that I quoted to you a while ago. Page number 10. Members of the Azara community said that they tried to do whatever they could to deflect the onslaught. Many said they now wore sunglasses and traditional Baluchi caps to hide their distinct Asiatic features. Young doctors belonging to the Hindu community narrated first-hand accounts of kidnapping for ransom and torture. Some police officers accused the frontier cops of colluding with extremist militants and claimed that they were involved in collecting extortion money and providing protection to sectarian militants. In terms of poverty, I was quite staggered in reading uh, the research here uh, with regards to just how poor uh, this uh, region, these communities uh, are. And uh, I uh, saw that the uh, report by the Social Policy and Development Centre in May of this uh, year listed Baluchistan as the poorest province in Pakistan, despite all of these uh, resources we've heard of, uh, with some 45 percent or more of the uh, population living below the poverty line. Um, uh, we've heard, I think, about the gas deals that are done with other regions and other provinces in Pakistan, and they subsidize, re uh, the gas is provided at a subsidized rate, uh, but those revenue flows do not uh, return uh, to the people of this region. Um, uh, uh, we've also touched on the violence and death, so I won't uh, reiterate those. I would agree with what Russ had to say, though, that um, and it's interesting, I came directly here, well not directly, it's not possible to come directly, uh, but I came via North, uh, from Northern Ireland uh, via London. Um, and of course, we know too well in, uh, in Northern Ireland the history of uh, sectarianism and violence on all sides. So I would agree with everything Russ said uh, with regards to ensuring that violence on any side uh, is abated as quickly as possible, because obviously we would abhor sectarianism or terrorism wherever it is. Um, but it is clear that the um, uh, Pakistani government is involved in activities in this region that uh, rightly uh, appall us all. And previous promises with regards to peace deals, peace processes, have clearly not been adhered to at all. And what's staggering about all of that is how little reference this has had uh, in the House of Commons, uh, in our House of Commons, I think also in the Canadian House of Commons. It's not an issue which is particularly um, uh, well um, uh, aired at all. And indeed, in looking uh, for debates in uh, the House of Commons or indeed in the House of Lords, uh, I struggled to find some other than we had responses from our ministers saying they had raised concerns with the Pakistani government and with the UN uh, over this. And of course, uh, we've had a number of debates recently regarding the elections and allegations 
of fraud and malpractice in those. But there isn't a great deal um, of debate within <coughs> Parliament regarding um, uh, the, the people uh, and uh, what is actually happening uh, on the ground. And that's something I think, uh, having been invited here to speak, is something I should go away and pursue uh, back in Westminster. Um, now, you did raise the issue of education, Mr. Chairman, and of course, so this is a, uh, the UK I think is the biggest provider of foreign aid, uh, possibly, uh, I think it's the biggest, if not will be the second biggest, probably after um, our American cousins, um, uh, uh, to Pakistan. Baluchistan has a long history of insurgency with nationalist groups advocating greater autonomy. For instance, in the period 1973 to 77, the Pakistani government fought a difficult campaign against Abalachi insurgency employing up to 80,000 troops. In recent years, the Balochistan people have been demanding economic emancipation, in particular through a bigger share of the revenue generated by the province's natural resources, principally natural gas. Despite Balochistan being rich in natural resources, the Baluch people remain economically marginalized and receive little benefit from the exploitation of these resources. While many advocate for a peaceful resolution to these issues, there are factions, including the Balochistan Liberation Army, that has engaged in armed insurrection and terrorism in pursuit of their objectives. I would like to take this opportunity to first express my deepest sympathies for the suffering the people of Balochistan are coming following the recent devastating earthquake. It's unbelievable that the Pakistan government has not even tried to obtain foreign assistance to help the people when in almost every national disaster the global community stands ready to provide help to the affected people. I'm almost certain that the refusal to allow foreign NGOs and foreign governments to help mitigate the consequences of the earthquake are because Pakistan does not want the world to know how badly it has treated Pakistan for over 60 years. This attitude of the Pakistan state provides sufficient justification for the Baluch to argue that their salvation lies only in self-determination and self-rule. The history of the Baluch people is one of constant struggle to secure their political and economic rights. This spells doom for the region, which desperately needs and demands peace. Pakistan is the odd one out, which wants anarchy to prevail so that its army and elite can financially profit and wield the clout politically. The question here, respected friends, is not only about the rights and safety of the Baluch nation, which is being decimated by a dirty war which has started <coughs> to assume genocidal proportions and the willful stoppage of international aid to the quake victims in Awara that matters also concerns the world which faces the unambiguous terror threat and the issue of protecting democracy in Afghanistan which has come at a huge price both in terms of lives and money. It is the duty of the world to defang the regional wolf ready to commit carnage to satisfy its insatiable hunger of power and pleth. As I have said before, a free, independent Baluchistan is the best guarantee of keeping this political predator at bay. I thank you very much. We are looking at serious trouble in the future. I implore my members, my friends who are in Parliament, in Europe, or in Britain, or in Canada, to make sure that unless and until the military of Pakistan is declared to be a terrorist organization, whether it is Mr. Zardari or Nawaz Sharif, it does not matter who gets elected. You have to understand 5% of people in Balochistan voted for its chief minister. 5%, 95% of the people supported the two gentlemen on my right and my left. And 
for anyone to think that peaceful negotiations or education will help, let me assure our friend from Great Britain that some of the nastiest Islamist jihadis come from Oxford University. Education is not the answer. Human liberty, gender equality, and the freedom of individual is primarily at war in Balochistan. If you give everyone an education that is based on Nazi hatred of the Jew or the Islamist hatred <coughs> of Western civilization, there is no point in educating anyone. I'd rather live with a free-thinking, illiterate, tribal human being than an <coughs> educated man from Oxford University who has nothing but contempt for the very society in that uh, made him and opened its arm to him. I'm referring to the uh, Maggie Hassan who does the program on human rights through Al Jazeera in your university, sir. Spare us the killers and murderers that come from the United Kingdom to assassinate Daniel Pearl in Karachi. We can do without the education that the West is giving, with the America has given $20 billion to spread hatred against the Hindu, the Jew, the Black, the Christian, the Baloch, the Pashtun, the Sindhi, the Mahajan. Until and unless Balochistan is created as a free state, a secular liberal democracy as outlined by men on the hills who are fighting for the freedom, the world faces an existentialist threat at the hands of the Pakistan military. Thank you very much.